So this is a story about how um, I'm using the Basis 2 board to drive the LED display on, um, on the board. So we've got these seven segment digits. So we've got four of them. And uh, if you read the reference manual, um, it talks about how um, they're minimizing the number of wires needed to drive the digits. So there are these enable bits. And when you pull the enables low, um, that digit is lit. So, you know, when you pull um, AN0 low, digit zero is low. And you can see that there's some typos here, right? Because it's AN1 through AN4, but here they talk about lines AN0 through AN3. But at any rate, so these are enable bits. Over here, you have the individual seven digits plus decimal point. And, um, and so you can think of, um, turning a digit on and then lighting individual segments. Now, it's kind of an old story, and you can make the numbers. You can actually make hex numbers if you want. Um, I think there's like 124 possibilities, something like that. Um, 128. So at any rate, uh, uh, if you go um, into the Verilog, so I wrote a couple of modules to do this. Um, so one of them, of course, is the top level module. So I've got inputs. I've got four switches that choose the um, uh, the digit I'm going to display. And then I've got four bits to represent a number and their switches. So if I wanted to make nine, right, that would be uh, an eight and a one. So it would be one, zero, zero, one um, in the switch number. Uh, and then I need to pipe those signals to the actual uh, LED display. So that's what this 4-bit and this 7-bit set is. Note there's a mapping of number to um, the segments right here. And I did that with a big mess of a Carnot map. So then inside of my module, my top-level module, I just have two machines. One of them selects the, um, the digit that I'm going to light up. And uh, I want to point out that this is an active low circuit. Uh, so when you pull the bit low, it glows. And then I also have another module, and this is where all the Carnot maps are. And there are more than one way to do that. And so in that one, um, uh, the, um, the number is the input and the seven segments is the output. So here's the actual select the digit module. So I have three pins from the switch, uh, four pins from the switches in, and four pins going out to turn on an individual di digit. And I've written it in an exclusive uh, way, so we'll never have more than one digit light up simultaneously because it's written with um, this uh, anded structure. Also note that it's an active low, and that's why there are these exclamation points, these negations on the outside. And then my second module is um, uh, so mapping the number to the segments. So again, I have an input of four bits, so that's the number. An output is seven bits, so that's the segments. And then I use this. Um, it's it's not necessary. It's just shorthand. So I'm calling um, n zero. Uh, it's like a temporary variable. Variable. And in Verilog, those are called wires. So n zero is array element n in, and then in brackets zero. And then I've also got wires that map these individual segments to, um, uh, to these, again, internal temporary variables. Um, so here's my Carnot map and it doesn't work. So that's why I don't feel bad showing it to you. Uh, it works mostly. And the thing that, um, that I found is when I when I made the truth table in the Carnot map, I wrote them for active high. So segment A would be one when you want it to light. But in working with the system, it seems like they're active low. And that's where there are exclamation points. Now, this is a puzzle I don't fully understand. Um, so I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but I wanted to show you that I also uh, am mapping these individual uh, buses, right? So you have four four bits and they're all structured in an array. So you can think of that as a bus. So I've got uh, a lot of inputs and outputs. Um, so if you look in the, 
in the in the user manual, you know, they've got typos, and so then you're not quite sure what they're talking about. And then if you read down here, they say so if an is asserted while well, cb and cc are asserted they don't actually tell you what asserted means right are you pulling it high or pulling it low it just means that's the bit you're playing with um so they you know you would think that if you you power whatever power means if you power these two bits you know they should light up so what does it mean to power a bit well digilent also gives you a um a schematic for the basis two. So here's the basis two schematic. So it feels like this is power and there's a resistor here to limit the current so we don't burn out the display digit. And then it feels like you're providing ground here. I mean, that's what this schematic feels like. Oops, sorry. Um, and these schematics, you know, you can you can read them with a little bit of practice. But here's the goofy thing. So, um, so if you go back here, it's a TOF. 2481BEN. So that's the part number. Um, so I Googled that, right? And then I I got this uh, PDF from Taiwan Oasis. And uh, and so here, it again looks like 11, right? That's going to be uh, a power supply, like a 5 volt high. And then right here, you've got an LED. So that's the digit. And then you're, if you provide ground at 12, that digit's going to light up. So it feels like active high to light something up and active low for the digit itself to light up. And you can see how the signals are multiplexed. Um, so in a minute, I'll show you the, um, the output and the puzzle. So here's my video. I've got my basis two board and I've powered it on and uploaded a design. So I'll program it right now. So it's programming, and uh, programming is done. So now the left four switches, switches select. So I can select that bit, or that bit, or that bit, or that bit. Now if you uh, pay close attention, you'll realize that the order I've selected these and the order they light up is backwards. So that's something in the uh, array notation that um, I have to figure out. So right now these four switches are all low, and so I get a zero, which makes me feel good. And I can count up. So one, two, three, and then look what happens at four. Ha <laughs> ha. So I told you those Carnot maps aren't right. Sorry. Uh, five, five works. Six, nope. So um, it's always good to troubleshoot your designs. Seven, um, oh no, that's five, so it should look like that. So now 8, that's not right. 9, that's not right either. So um, when you uh, implement your own Carnot maps, you'll find that there is this kind of nonsense that you have to sort out, and that's life. So you just record the bad cases and then check your Carnot maps, check your code. Um, there's lots of ways to make mistakes. That's what makes life interesting. Also, uh, for fun, I implemented this as hex. So... I have 9, and then I have 10, another error, right? Because 10 should be A, not 6. Here's 11. 11 should be B. Hey, it works now. 11, and then here's 12, C. 13 is D, 14 is E, and 15 is F. So it works, mostly. 